Welcome to another production of Park TV 16 Sports on Location. We are here bringing you the Section 5A Final Boys Lacrosse Championship match. The winner tonight goes to the state tournament in Stillwater next week. And you are watching Park TV 16 Sports. We're on the beautiful campus of Benilde St. Margaret's and it's Maple Grove visiting Benilde St. Margaret's. The Red Knights are 15-0. The Crimson of Maple Grove are 14-1. The two best teams in the section are here, as it should be. I'm looking forward to this match. The Red Knights haven't lost in two years. The defending two-time state champions, and they got the first faceoff, and the first shot taken by Dylan Parker is saved by number 44, the goaltender for the Crimson. <laughs> And my program has not the right numbers for the players, unfortunately, not even close. But I'm gonna guess that 24 in my program is 44. Brady Moline, but I really have no idea the numbers are off. But here comes number two, Robbie Hoyt for the Red Knights on the interception and the turnover. And now it's picked up by number one, Ricky Peterson, the ninth grader for the Crimson. And now he gets it stripped by, guess who? Kyle Stevens, number zero. The great defender for the Red Knights and a nice outlet pass to the near side to number 22, Jack Bourget, the defender. Now he gets it to Carson Brandt, number one. And we are underway here, 12 minutes on the board. We're already down to 10 and a half in the first quarter. They play four 12 minute quarters and right now we're 0-0. Zero, zero. And there was Gus Bell, number six, at the point position, playing catch with number five, Luke Drews. And now to the near side, that's Carson Brandt behind the net to Dylan Parker and all the familiar characters are on board here for the Red Knights as they try to defend their section championship to move on to the state tournament next week. And there is Gus Bell and this promises to be a great match. Maple Grove, a huge suburb now and a big time player in most high school sports and they are proving it in the lacrosse field too. Hunter Payer takes a beautiful pass from Gus Bell and it's kicked out by number 24, I think that's 44, Brady, Brady Moline. I'll check on that, but I don't have a number 44 on my list of players for Maple Grove, but I'll double check that. And I do have a number 44, it's the goaltender, Gail Farnoik. Hail Farnoik. Two great saves by him early on, and defense is gonna matter in these championship games. It's an old cliche in any sport, but defense wins championships and it's awfully true. Okay, now Gus Bell back on offense on that far wing. Up to the top of the key to number four, Brad Little. Now to the near side, Carson Brandt. Brandt will try to work his Mudrick on the left side. Inside, wide open, Dylan Parker, and he lost it out of his basket. You could see the frustration. He was on the doorstep of Hale Fenoik, but not to happen right there. Now the outlet pass on the bounce. Can't get it to number 16 for the Crimson. That's Lucas Baki. And now it's picked up by number 22 with the long stick, Jack Bourget. Two great plays on defense by Bourget early on here in the first quarter. I am Robert Christensen. Glad you're with us here on Park TV 16 Sports. And that is number five, Luke Drews. And he'll settle things down. Beautiful afternoon here in St. Louis Park, I should add. The last couple matches, we've been inundated with high dew points, high humidity, and all kinds of smoke from those eastern wildfires in the province of Quebec. That is finally all cleared out. Dew points are in the low 50s. What a perfect night for any type of activity outside. And there's a shot by Luke Drews, and he lets that loose way wide left and out of bounds, and the Red Knights will retain possession, number one, Carson Brandt now gives it up on top to number 12. That's Adam Beckman, his shot off the mark. And that is gonna be a turnover to the Crimson with the ball, number 14. That's Joshua Imms, the freshman. Up top down to number 16. That is Lucas Bakke. Now he gets met by Dylan Parker right at midfield. Now picked up by number 46, that's Jackson Kuznick. Kuznick now with the Crimson, getting harassed on the other side. He goes down to his knees, no whistle, and now a flag comes out on the far side, outside of your picture. And that's probably gonna be an infraction against the Red Knights. Time on the scoreboard, 7.55. And now a huddle right there at around the 40 by the Crimson. And the Crimson are proving their mettle here early on. 
the Red Knights in their last three games have outscored their opponents, I don't know the math, 70 to one or something like that. But now I think it's gonna get a little tougher to get back to the state tournament and you gotta make, you gotta believe that these Crimson wanna take down these Red Knights. All right, now here comes the Crimson's number 20. That's Jason Rass, the sophomore to number 45. That is Landon Baki. Now to the near side. Now inside the shot and a goal! And a beautiful pass play from number one, Ricky Peterson. As he hit his player, I believe that was number 33 or seven. 45 got the goal, that's right. Landon Baki right in front. He was loose, the defense did not pick him up. He turns, and one of the key parts about that play was Landon Baki did not hesitate. He turned and shot right away. That didn't give the defense time to converge. And now the Crimson on the road in this championship game are up one nothing. back to the center circle. Time on the scoreboard, 7.31 and counting down and the Red Knights have it on offense. And they are gonna have their work cut out today. Now Robbie Hoyt to Carson Brandt. He's in that near corner where he likes to be, and now there is Robbie Hoyt, number two. Hoyt now to the top of the key to 23, Jack Anderson. Now Gus Bell. Bell, the leading scorer, he exceeded 50 goals last game. As he comes in, gets pushed back on defense, and the Crimson doing a nice job. That's number 50, Briggs Leiser. Now Leeser, I should say, Gus Bell takes the shot, goes for the bounce shot, and it goes wide right. Hale Farnoik, the goaltender for the Crimson in the right position. And there's a good wind out there, although I don't think wind really impacts the play of lacrosse so much, except maybe when you're running or so forth, it might impact the ball, but these balls sail so fast from such short ranges, I can't imagine the wind has much of an impact, and there's a quick shot and a goal. Dylan, Dylan Popain with the goal. He takes the assist from number one, Carson Brandt, and the Red Knights have evened up the score at one. Right here, nice look inside, and the quick shot and the goal. Nothing that Fornoik, the goaltender number 44, could do. And we're tied at one here at the McQuinn Athletic Complex. Full parking lot out there. Big crowd on hand. Stands mostly full. And we're back to the center circle and doing the honors all season long has been Maxwell Miller and he wins another one. Picking it up is Brad Little for the Red Knights. As he waves off Kyle Stevens then delivers the ball to Carson Brand in the corner. And the Red Knights are in business again. We're tied at one, 6.18 to go first quarter. Nice pass to Kyle Stevens off, off the bench. And what a surprise that was. It looked like he was gonna take a break as he's normally on defense. And then they brought him back in with that big long stick. They hit him for a goal opportunity, but to no avail. Now on the far side, Popeen! with the sharp shot right there. Upper left hand corner beats Fornoik. And now the Red Knights are up two to one. After giving up goal number one, they score two consecutives. Here's the replay and look at that great pass right there. And Popain from a very tight angle in my estimation beats number 44, Hale Fornoik. And the Red Knights are in familiar territory. And when I say that, that means they have the lead. Two to one here. That goal comes with 6.03 remaining first quarter. Back to the center circle and number seven, Maxwell Miller for the Red Knights going against number nine for the Crimson, Beck Cherney. And now another quick shot by Brandt and that gets deflected wide. I'm not sure if that hit the crossbar or if that was defended well. Let's look at the replay. I think it hit the crossbar the way it ricocheted. Oh yes, it did. Missing by that much. Anybody that remembers the old show, Maxwell Smart, you miss by that much, and that's what he missed by right there. Okay, now number two is Robbie Hoyt, and he takes a shot and a goal. And the Red Knights are on fire right now. They're not missing at all. Three consecutive goals. That goal by Hoyt comes with 537 remaining in the first quarter. The bounce shot beats Fornoik as he jumps up. 
showing his frustration and disappointment. So after the Crimson got off to a great start with the first goal, they have now given up three consecutives. And it's three to one with 5.37 to go, first quarter. And there's Maxwell Miller, and he's got space in front of him. He goes to the left side, and Brandt with the quick shot goes wide right and out of bounds. And it looks like the Red Knights will retain possession with Hunter Payer in the corner, and we're back underway quickly now. The Red Knights did not like giving up that first goal, and they're going to make them pay right here. Now Popain up top to number four, Brad Little. Little to the far side. That's number 10 that's come in, Cannon Mills, and he gets Malachi crunched right at the 25-yard line. And now the Crimson comes away with it. That's number 31 for them. That is Connor Cashbaum. And now the turnover and back up to Kyle Stevens. Kyle Stevens is down the middle of the field in the offensive end. Finds Dylan Popain on the doorstep. Great save by Fournoy. Ball loose in the crease. And Fournoy comes up. And what a great save by number 44 for the Crimson. And now a late flag stops the clock with 4.45 to go. And Dylan Popain was right there on the doorstep. Ball loose. Goalie didn't know where it was. And the defense comes in to protect Fornoik and the ball. And you gotta believe Dylan Popain is gonna be dreaming about that one tonight. He had a prime opportunity, but you gotta give credit to the goaltender, Fornoik, with the save there. Going down 4-1, down three, would have been very problematic if you're a Crimson fan. And now we're back underway, and I'm trying to locate where the ball is, and there it is, right there at midfield. Number 33, get to the right, the camera, there we go. I didn't know where it was either, so uh, not my, uh, no, no, no skin. That's Tanner Brendan, number one, and now a goal. Number seven this time for the Crimson, Josh Thompson. If I, my eyes didn't deceive me, I believe that's who scored that one. So just like that, the Crimson answer back. Our score now, three to two. S scoreboard says 429 remaining. And we've got a great match here at the campus of Benilde St. Margaret. State tournament is the goal here. And this game matters to all these kids out there. Now Maxwell Miller. Rolls it back, picked up nicely by number five, Luke Drews. Now Drews gets it stripped away by number 20 for the, red, or for the Crimson, that's Shane Rask. And now Kyle Stevens. I'll tell you what, Kyle Stevens is a catalyst out there for the Red Knights all season long. He mostly plays defense, but he comes up big at every match, doing things just like that. An unsung hero in my estimation. And now here come the Red Knights as stepping off from the sidelines. Number 12, Adam Beckman, the junior midfielder, now around the horde to Brant, back to Dylan Popain, now Brant, to number five, Luke Drews, and now we got Beckman again. Now number four, that's Brad Little. Little takes a shot, no, it was a pass to Popain right in front of the pair, and he scores! What a brilliant bang, bang, shot, and a goal. Number 12, Beckman, to behind the net, Dylan Popain, who found Hunter Payer, number 21, for goal number four. And the Red Knights move back to a two-goal lead right there. Well done. Popain from Beckman, Payer with the goal. It's 4-2. That goal comes with 3.36 remaining. Back to the center circle, Maxwell Miller for the Red Knights. He's been stellar at the face-off circle, and he is again, and now it's picked up by number 33, Brady Marcus, the freshman, as he rushes it into the offensive zone, gives it up to number two, Robbie Hoyt. Now on the far sideline, that was Dylan Popain, number 16. Gus Bell now steps off the sideline, their leading scorer. He's taken one shot tonight. That was off the mark, but the Red Knights now nursing a 4-2 lead. Jack Anderson to the near side, Dylan Popain. Now he'll switch positions with Carson Brandt, number one. Brandt now flicks it to Jack Anderson. Anderson looks for a driving lane from the top of the key. Now Gus Bell, he'll try the same. He gets double teamed. Nice defense there by the Crimson. And now Carson Brandt, under three to go, 2.45 to be exact. 
Now, Carson Brandt takes the point position at the top of the key, takes the shot, goes wide left out of bounds, and they're gonna award possession, will remain with the Red Knights. Hunter Payer picks it up real quick, number 21. You gotta like the Red Knights and how they're keeping the pace and the intensity up here. Now Carson Brandt cuts back left. These two teams have not met this year, so there is gonna be a feeling out period. And now to the near side, Brandt quickly up to the top of the key to number two, Robbie Hoyt. Hoyt now tries to drive the lane, looked the shoot, now he gave it up to, I believe that's Bell. Bell comes in with the shot, he goes wide right. He had a player right in his face. Number 26 for Maple Grove, that was Emerson Knudsen. And good defense by the Crimson as we approach two minutes remaining in the quarter number one. Now racing into the offensive zone for the Crimson was number 31, that's Connor Cashbaum. And now with the ball, number 33, Trenner Brendan. He's just outside the 40 yard line and he'll wait for the substitutes to come in. They're not really substitutes, it's just a running substitution pattern and it all depends on what's happening on the field. They have more specialists in lacrosse than I've ever seen in any other sport. Now with the ball, number 28, that is Rory Scanlon. Ball loose, picked up by number one, Ricky Peterson. Now to number 45, that is Landon Baki. Baki with it, he'll rush the right side behind the net. Now he'll flick it out to the far wing. That is number 28 with it for the Crimson. And I'm looking off of two roster sheets here. They're, neither one of them are complete. Now Rory Scanlon, now with it. Number 33, Trevor Brendan. Brendan now gets pushed back by Kyle Stevens. And that's what I'm talking about. Good defense by zero there. Now behind the net, nice pass, but also good defense by the Red Knights. Number 15, Riley Murphy. Now behind the net, number 45. That is Landon Baki up top to number one, Ricky Peterson. Peterson at the top of the key, gives it up in the quick shot, a goal, or was it? On the side of the net, no goal. And Axel Esco gets it out to Kyle Stevens. He's got room in front of him. He easily brings it into the offensive zone. Now, Jack Anderson took a pass. He didn't get rid of it soon enough, and he got checked off the ball by number 15 for the Crimson, Caden Hamaki. Now ball loose, and the poke check and the four check works for the Red Knights. As Hunter Payer comes away with it, and now we have a whistle, and is there gonna be a timeout on the field? I believe there is going to be a timeout and I'm looking at the scoreboard and with the light and my angle from the press box it's hard to see what how much time is left I think it's 120 remaining or is it 1.2 seconds remaining how what does it say there Paul Broden 17 seconds okay now I see it but boy my angle with the light it's really hard to see that sometimes now I see the one in the seven and the two eight so there you go what a frenetic Fast pace, first quarter here in this championship 5A boys lacrosse match, 4-2 our score. And this is quite a different match than we brought you the last week. Thursday was the quarterfinals. The semifinals were here on Monday. Not only is there no smoke and no high humidity, the scoring is quite different. Before the Red Knights scored 18 or 20 goals in their last two matches, this time it's just four here in the first quarter. So quite a different opponent here in Maple Grove coming in here, trying to upset the two time defending state champion Red Knights. And now the Crimson done with their huddle and following the timeout with 17 seconds remaining. And I'm not sure which team took that timeout. It might've been the Red Knights since they had possession. I don't think that's necessary necessarily I know in basketball you can't time out, you can't call a timeout unless you have possession of the ball. Or if it's a side out, then I think either team can call a timeout. But the Red Knights might want to try to sneak in one goal here right by to the end of the quarter. And now here we're underway with 17 seconds. Gus Bell, the leading scorer. Nine seconds remaining. First quarter, shot, Carson Brandt. A little too much mustard on that as it sailed over the crossbar. Clock stopped briefly. Red Knights have it. Gus Bell takes a shot, and it's deflected by Fornoik, the goaltender. And just as they were jousting for the ball, Dylan Popain against number 16, Lucas Bakke, 
The whistle sounds signaling the end of quarter number one. So after one quarter complete in the section 5A final, our score, Red Knights four, visitors two. You're watching Park, T Park TV 16 Sports. Stay with us. When I was in Iraq, our convoy was hit. It was bad. After I came home, I could still hear booms and see tracer fire. Makes it hard to be a good mom. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. I'm Naomi Mathis, Air Force veteran. With the right support, more veterans can reach victories great and small. With help from DAV, I was able to begin to heal. DAV provides a lifetime of support to veterans of every generation, helping more than a million veterans each year. Today, I'm part of DAV. We're veterans helping veterans to get the benefits they've earned. And I give my veterans my all. But there's more to be done and more victories to be won. My victory is being able to be here for my children. Naomi Mathis, thank you for your service. May your victories inspire many more. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Back to Park TV 16 Sports on location. We're bringing you 5A final boys lacrosse. If you're just joining us, the Red Knights are up 4-2. Even though they gave up goal number one, they came back with a 3-1 lead. It, the deficit got brought down to 3-2, and now it's 4-2 as we begin quarter number two. Red Knights going left to right, picked up by number 15 for the Red Knights. That is Riley Murphy, and now quickly, the shot and a goal. This time, Dylan Parker, he takes the assist from number two, Robbie Hoyt. And just like that, 11 seconds into quarter number two, the Red Knights at home now have their largest lead of the evening, 5-2. Dylan Parker goes up high and beats Fornoik over his right shoulder. If you're looking at him, it's his left, but if you were to tell you which shoulder, it's his right. And a nice initial play here in quarter number two. Now back to the center circle, number nine, Shea House. The junior against Riley Murphy, and there's an infraction against the Crimson, and that awards possession of the ball to number four, Brad Little and the Red Knights. And now the Red Knights are in business again in the second quarter with a 5-2 lead. Winner moves on to Stillwater, Minnesota next week, where the Red Knights hope to defend their state title for the third consecutive year. Now, Dylan Parker, who just got that last goal in the far corner, flips it out top. Now working is Gus Bell. Gus Bell, he wants to score. Shot, Fornoik, number 44, makes the save. And Fornoik is the best goaltender I've seen on an opposing team all year in boys lacrosse following the Red Knights. And now there was a turnover and they give it right back. And a chance now for the Crimsons, number 50, that is Briggs Leeser. Now number 33 with it, that is Tanner Brendan. Brendan now will bring it in, he's got an opening and he gets pushed back just in the nick of time. Good defense by Kyle Stevens. And there's another one of those little things that zero does for these Red Knights. Now at the top of the key, number one, Tyler Steinkoff. Steinkoff flicks it to number 20, Ricky Peterson. He's their leading scorer. He's got 51 goals, 25 assists on the year. So you gotta believe the Red Knights are very aware of him. Crimson retained possession. Rory Scanlon, he's their second leading scorer and he gets robbed of a goal there by Axel Esco. Great save by Esco. Red Knights now with possession, outlet pass. Now Kyle Stevens rushes it into the offensive zone. And he gets it poke checked away and he gets it back. No, he doesn't. Ball loose at midfield on the far sideline. Now picked up by number 31 from Maple Grove. That's Connor Cashbaum. And Cashbaum gets it to the near side to number 28, Rory Scanlon. As I was just mentioning, he's their second leading scorer. 48 goals, 18 assists on the year. As he'll come back to the left side, Stevens. Nope, that is number 11 for the Red Knights. William Connor, now number 33, Trevor Brendan. Behind the net to number seven, Josh Thompson. Now up top to number 20, Ricky Peterson. To the far side, Tyne Steinkoff, his shot and a goal. As he beats Axel Esco, and now the Crimson 
Hole within two, that goal comes with 9.21 to go, second quarter. Here's the replay as we look at Tyler Steinkoff with the shot from way out, he had a man in his face and he's able to get that ball past Axel Esco for goal number three, time on the clock. 9.21 remaining second quarter. You're watching Park TV 16 Sports. Glad you're with us. I know we're not streaming live, but wherever and whenever you're watching this, thank you. We like the audience for sure. Now number 33 with it is Brady Marcus for the Red Knights, and he gives it up to number four, Brad Little. Nice job there by Marcus, number 33. Grinding out that ball, getting possession. Now Dylan Popain with it on the near side, the sophomore gets it to the near sideline to number four, Brad Little. Little now to the top of the key, gets it to Cannon Mills coming off the sideline. Now to the far side to number 12, Adam Beckman. Beckman, spin move, almost thought he'd take about taking a shot. Good defense by the Crimsons, number 46. That is Jackson Kuznick. Now Carson Brandt. No look pass right underneath the Dylan Popain and he gets his second goal. I believe that might be a second goal. But one thing I do know, it's goal number six for the Red Knights and now they've matched their largest lead of the afternoon. That goal comes with 8.33 remaining. And there's Carson Brandt on the replay. Look at the no look pass by Brandt. He loves doing that and I don't blame him. I played guard in high school basketball. The no look pass is the funnest thing to do. And it results in goal number six. Again, that goal comes with 8.33 remaining second quarter. Now back to the center circle. Riley Murphy once again. Nope, this time on the faceoff, it wasn't Riley Murphy. It was number 18, Benjamin Watts, the junior. And he wins that as we has the Red Knights have possession. Number 15, Riley Murphy. Now into the offensive zone is number 11, William Connor. And Connor, the defender, does a nice job securing possession on the offensive end. He gives it up to Jack Anderson. Now Dylan Popain, who just got that last goal, gives it up to Gus Bell, the leading scorer. He's taken a couple shots this afternoon to no avail. And now on the far side, Carson Brandt. And now around the horn we go from Dylan Parker to Popain. Now to Bell again. And Jack Anderson over to Robbie Hoyt. Back to Carson Brandt. Brandt now does a spin move. Has an opening and underneath he goes in. They're going to call it. Fornoik had the save but couldn't hold on to it. And it just dribbled across the goal line. The referee was right there to make the call. And that's going to be goal number seven for the Red Knights. Watch this. What a brilliant creative shot that was as Carson Brandt went low and like a ground ball. And there it is, just crossing the goal line. And the goal's gonna count. And that goal, the seventh of the afternoon, comes with 7.32 remaining in the second quarter. And the Red Knights have their largest lead of the afternoon at four goals. And back to the center circle and number seven, Maxwell Miller. Loses the face off, uh, yes he does, and it's picked up by number 46. That is Jackson Kuznick for the Crimson. Now with it, number 26, that's Emerson Knudsen. He gets taken down right in the middle, no call there. Kyle Stevens with another great play, forcing that turnover. And with it on the ground in his knees was number five, Luke Drews, and that drew a whistle. And I think we have another timeout on the field with 7-11 remaining second quarter. And that might give us a chance to look at the bracket and how teams got here. And there it is. There's Benil. They're the number one seed. Maple Grove at the bottom, the number two seed. And the scores were as follows. Maple Grove then played Hopkins Park in that quarterfinal. They won that match 11 to two. Then they just squeaked by number three, Robbinsdale Armstrong in the semifinal on Monday night, eight to seven, which gave them the right to be here this afternoon. Meanwhile, for the Red Knights, their quarterfinal win, check this out, 24 to one against number eight Breck, and then 18 to one just on Monday night. We were here to bring that to you against YZ at 18 to one. So they've given up two goals in their last two playoff games and they've already given up three. So that tells you that 
the class of the Crimson is a little higher uh, and the opponent is a little more difficult. So there you have it, number one and number two, and you wouldn't want to have it anywhere. You want the two best teams in the final, and that's what we have here in this Section 5A boys lacrosse matchup on a really gorgeous afternoon here in St. Louis Park. 80 degrees, low humidity, light breeze, early June, a gorgeous Minnesota afternoon. Summer has arrived, and so has boys lacrosse playoffs, and we're here to bring it to you all afternoon okay they break the huddles again the clock shows seven minutes 11 seconds remaining and if i remember correctly i believe the red knights have possession and they do carson brandt in his own zone and he rushes it right down the gut of the field into the offensive zone at the point position flicks it to the left side to number five Brad Little, or Luke Drews, I should say, my fault. Now Gus Bell to the near side, Carson Brandt. Now number two, Robbie Hoyt, Dylan Parker. Great ball rotation here. Much like basketball as they throw it around the horn. Exactly like basketball, actually. Now number two with it, Robbie Hoyt. Hoyt at the top of the key to Gus Bell. He lets it fly. Deflected in front, ball loose. And is it gonna be a goal? I couldn't quite tell if it crossed the goal line. There was a lot of spin on it. Here's that replay. Gus Bell, wide open shot, bounced it. Bornoik, and look at the English on the ball. Spun it back away from the goal. If the spin had been the other way, it would have been a goal for sure. We used to call it putting English on the ball back in the day. Now the outlet passed by Fornoik to number 27 for the Crimson, well executed. 27 is Jackson Bennett. Now Bennett with the long stick, loses it as it's poke checked away by number 15, William Connor, or Riley Murphy, I should say. And now that draws a whistle and stops the clock with 6.04 remaining. Fast paced second quarter, and now we have a huddle right there around the 30, a committee meeting by the Crimson. Not sure what the whistle was about. And I'm wondering if number five, Luke Drews, is gonna get on one knee. So there's gonna be a power play for the Crimson as I see Luke Drews on the far sideline, out of your picture to the right, is on one knee. And I don't think it's because he's injured. I think it's because that's what signifies when you're in the penalty box in lacrosse. So the penalty against Luke Drews comes with 6.04 to go. So the Crimson on the power play. I didn't hear for how long. And now they have the ball with number 33, Tanner Brendan, and a chance to cut the deficit here as we're now under six minutes to play. Number seven with it, Josh Thompson, over to 33, Brendan. Behind the net, that was number 45, Landon Baki. And now the quick shot and a goal. Or was it a save? No, it was deflected outside. And it's picked up by number 13 for the Red Knights, Rafi Johnson Nixon. And they award possession to the Red Knights. So great defense. Clock stopped with 5.32 to go. Here's that replay, the quick shot. I couldn't tell if it was a goal. No, he hit the post. Number 28 for the Crimson, Rory Scanlon. Their second leading score misses the mark by that much. Now Carson Brandt finds a wide open. Dylan Popain, and he's unable to connect. Popain right there, tough angle though, and he sails it over the crossbar, out of bounds, and they award possession to the Red Knights. Carson Brandt now gets it to number four. That is Brad Little. Little now will trot behind the net. Great defense by Tyler Steinkoff for the Crimson. Man-to-man -man tight defense by the Crimson as they push number four. Little all the way out. Little though gets by him, found a little bit of space, but decides to give it up to Gus Bell, who came back to help out. He takes a shot. He's able to hold on to that ball in the basket, getting hacked there by number 26, Emerson Knutson. Nice job by Gus Bell taking those shots. Takes another shot from Knutson. Sheds him, finds some space, now gives it up to Dylan Popain behind the net. Popain, number 16. Finds a wide open, not wide open. Bell turns and shoots it over the crossbar. And that's been a theme tonight or this afternoon. And it might just be the adrenaline as he just misses the mark over the crossbar, Gus Bell. So far, no goals for him, the leading scorer. And now we have a player down on that far side. 
and he's holding his left knee, and I did not see. Yeah, I don't know how he fell. Let's see if we can, it's number 26. Okay, Emerson Knudsen, that left knee caught his cleat. Oh, right there, he hyperextended his knee, didn't he? That's what it was. That's what it looked like at first glance. Maybe we could look at it again. I think that was a bit of a hyperextension as his cleats caught and then his knee, you know, goes real straight. It tries to go the other way. Right, watch his left leg, right? There, oh my goodness. Sometimes they can shake those off. It might just be a stretched ligament or two, but it was that last plant with all his weight and he had kind of lost his balance, which makes it even more difficult because then all the weight just goes right on that knee and it's not in a position to bend the way it's intended to bend. And it did look like it hyperextended and it could be an ankle too injury. They're looking at his lower shin there and they're gonna take their time, but it's clearly the left leg there. They're gonna, yeah, they're not gonna allow him to put any weight on it. Maybe they'll let him test it out. But he might be done for the night. That right leg, and he that brings a nice round of applause, of respect for number 26, Emerson Knudsen, the sophomore. Just a fluke accident there, running at full speed, trying to win a championship game. And Emerson Knutson, a sophomore, might end his night. He is starting to put a little bit of weight on it, but it doesn't look real confident that he's gonna make a return, at least from what I can see from across the way here. But we'll keep an eye on him and see if he does reemerge. You know, when you're much younger, your ligaments and things can bounce back pretty good, and sometimes they just need to shake it off. But that was a serious injury, to be sure and well, hopefully it wasn't too serious. Okay, now the Crimson still on the power play with the ball and play back underway with 4.08 remaining and the Crimson on the power play. That's number one, Ricky Peterson. And now the Crimson's number 28 with it. Rory Scanlon and now on the far side, that's number 33, Tanner Brendan as we're now under four minutes to go in the half. Second quarter, Brendan looking for the shot and he scores it. Tanner Brendan cuts the deficit to seven to four. Now it's just a three goal lead for the Red Knights. And that I think is gonna be a power play goal. If it isn't technically, I think the power play had a huge impact on how they scored that. Cause even if technically Luke Drews was able to get off the sideline, I don't know if he had a meaningful impact on whether that could be defended. So power play goal, I'm gonna call it. And that goal comes with 3.41 to go in the second quarter. Our score, seven to four. From the McQuinn Athletic Complex on the campus of Benilde St. Margaret's as they try to defend their section 5A, swiping it there for the Crimson was number nine, Shea House, the junior but the possession's gonna be with Kyle Stevens, zero for the Red Knights as he brings it back into the offensive zone. Now with it for the Red Knights, number two, Robbie Hoyt. Hoyt now, he'll slow it down. I look at the clock, 318 remaining, second quarter. Robbie Hoyt now, number two. Up top on the key to number one, Carson Brandt. The most competitive boys lacrosse match I've seen all year by these Red Knights. They're usually up by nine, 10 goals by now. So they've stepped up in class in terms of the opponent they're facing in the Crimson. Really an emerging powerhouse in all sports in high school, Maple Grove. Now number one, Carson Brandt. Keeps that ball loose, sheds off another defender, sheds off another one, and they're gonna call a charge, probably because he lowered the shoulder. Not a lot of protests from Brand, and now number 31 gets mugged from behind, and that brings a flag. And that's gonna be a penalty. It might be called on number 12, Adam Beckman, as that flag came flying from behind the goal. And let's see if Beckman, number 12, is gonna take a knee on the sideline. And he's not arguing much or showing any type of body language. 
protesting it and he's pirouetting around on the sideline and I think he's going to be taking a knee here in a moment. There he goes. That's the penalty box. It's a virtual, not really a virtual, an invisible penalty box when you take the knee down there. So now on the power play, go the Crimson once again, down three goals with 2.37 remaining in the second quarter. And now we're underway again. Number seven starts it off, Josh Thompson, quickly behind the net. Bit of a miscue by number 28, but recovers is Rory Scanlon. Scanlon misses number 45 and an unforced error on the power play. That is a big time mental mistake by the Crimson, if you ask me. Time now, 2.22 remaining. And the Crimson giving up the ball at that juncture could be meaningful psychologically. Now Axel Esco hits at midfield. Gus Bell, number six, and what a turnaround there. Carson Brandt with it. Even though the other team's on the power play, an unforced air. Oh my goodness, you're trying to beat the two-time state champions at their home field. Those types of mistakes can be so costly. And now the Red Knights turn it back over with 1.57 to go. And now outlet pass to number 16 for the Crimson. That is Shane Rask. And now number 14 rushes it in. Joey Heisler gives it up to his teammate number seven, Josh Thompson. 1.49 remaining second quarter. And it appears the power play is over. Both teams at full strength. Little, our number 12 Beckman no longer on his knee. I look at the clock, 127 remaining until half. 7-4 our score in this championship of section 5A and another unforced air in my estimation. Tanner Boston gave it up and now coming away with it for the Red Knights, number 15. Riley Murphy rushes it all the way in and he misses Carson Brandt on a short pass. And Carson Brandt was coming towards him and that was a tough little miscue and another Orn Forest air by the Red Knights gives it right back to the Crimson with 107 remaining. The Crimson down by three, seven to four. And now they get it into the offensive zone. Nice pass ahead to numbers 27, Jackson Bennett. And now another turnover by the Red Knights. And now rushing in to the offensive zone for the Red Knights is number 13, Raffi Johnson Nixon. Nixon with it. Now he'll bounce it to Carson Brandt. 46 seconds remaining in the half and I expect the Red Knights are gonna hold it for a last shot here and they give it to Gus Bell, their leading scorer. Now he'll trot to the near side and occupy the wing position with 30 seconds remaining in the half. Red Knights up 7-4 in this class 5A final. Right in front, Dylan Parker with the goal. I thought he hit the post. Or it was defended well by Fornoy. Rebound comes all the way out with 17 seconds remaining. Dylan Parker in the slot to Gus Bell. Gus Bell now behind the net to Dylan Popain. Popain looked over, now to Robbie Hoyt. Robbie Hoyt to the far wing. With it, number 12, Beckman with a quick shot and it goes wide right with three seconds, two seconds, and a clock stopped with 2.3 seconds remaining. A chance for a bang bang play right here. There's the whistle, Popain right in front, quick shot by Beckman and a save by Fornoik and that'll end the half. Our score after two quarters complete in this section 5A final. Benilde seven, Maple Grove four, come on back for half number two. You're watching Park TV 16 Sports on location. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Back to Park TV 16 Sports on location. We are bringing you 5A Final Boys Lacrosse featuring Benilde St. Margaret's, the number one seed against the Maple Grove Crimson, the number two seed. We're about to begin the second half and this has been the toughest match I would submit the Red Knights have faced all year long. 
coming into this match. They've outscored their opponents about 50 to two, but right now it's 7-4 in the second half. And look at that nice outlet pass to the near side to Robbie Hoyt. Hoyt drives in from the wing, now gets pushed back. And we're just underway here, second half. You're watching Park TV 16 Sports. My name is Robert Christensen, glad you're with us. What an exciting match this is, especially considering the Red Knights haven't lost in two years. They are the two-time defending state champions looking for that third berth to the state tournament. And right now they're up by three and we're underway here, 12 minutes on the clock in the third quarter. Now Gus Bell, the leading scorer. He's been stymied tonight so far. Now Cannon Mills and the quick shot by Bell goes wide left out of bounds. And it looks like the Red Knights are gonna retain possession. Here's that replay from a very tight angle. Shot taken by Gus Bell, he's their leading scorer. And now Carson Brandt, he's really good at protecting that ball as he holds that arm out there. Another no look pass, this time it got deflected nicely this time by Maple Grove's number 16, that was Shane Rask. Otherwise that would have been another brilliant pass, but no harm, no fouls, the Red Knights retain possession. Now into the corner, Hunter Payer, he got the first goal of the night. And now he'll flip it out to Dylan Popain and now to Robbie Hoyt. And the Red Knights are in business on offense once again at home. Now Gus Bell. And the quick shot goes over the crossbar and out of bounds. Here's that replay, a little high. I will note, it seems like the Red Knights are a little bit more, less accurate on their shots tonight. That might be a result of the Crimson defense. And now it's picked up by Robbie Hoyt, and I will say this, I went into the bathroom here during halftime, I ran into Robbie, or to Adam Beckman, and I go, how's it feel out there? And he says, it's hot out there. So make no mistake, it is very, very hot. It says 78 degrees, but to the players running around, he said, it's hot. So a little FYI to those watching at home, and there is Gus Bell. You knew you couldn't keep him down all afternoon. And Gus Bell gets the scoring off in the second half. And he makes it 8-4, and that is the largest lead for the Red Knights. That goal comes with 9.53 to go, right there on that right wing. He sails it past number 44, the goaltender for the Crimson. Hale Fornoik, the senior, gives up that goal, and it's 8-4 early in the third quarter. Now back to the center circle. And that is Maxwell Miller once again, and it's picked up by Kyle Stevens, and there's a whistle. And they're gonna give the ball to the Crimson on that violation, and now with it for the Crimson, number 20, that is Ricky Peterson, their leading scorer. And he takes a bounce shot, and he handcuffed Axel Esco. And the leading scorer, Ricky Peterson, he came in with 51, and here's why. A nifty goal by Peterson. He just flicked it down there, and Axel Esco couldn't keep an eye on it, and it just got by him. And now it's 8-5, and that goal comes with 9.37 to go. So the Crimson are not gonna go away lightly here on the road. And back to the center circle, and we've got number seven once again for the Red Knights, Miller on the face off. And look at them fight for that thing. It looks like a wrestling match out there. And Miller comes away with it, or does he? Still loose, and it's picked up by number 31 instead for the Crimson. That is Connor Cashbaum. And now the Crimson, after getting that goal to cut the deficit to three, have the ball with plenty of time on the clock. And now trotting around midfield towards us is Tanner Brendan. Now. He'll give it up to number one, Tyler Steinkopf. So if you're a Crimson fan, you gotta have a little hop on your step right now after this comeback goal in the second half and now winning that possession. And nice defense there by the Red Knights as they were able to thwart that shot just as they let it go and that is why it wasn't accurate. But the Crimson retained possession with Ricky Peterson who got the last goal, Peterson Gives it up behind the net. Now back out to the left wing. And a nice push there by Kyle Stevens. And he does send number 26, Emerson Knutson, the sophomore back. Or excuse me, that was number 11. 
for the Red Knights, William Connor on defense. Now up top to number 28 for the Crimson, Rory Scanlon. And the drive by Scanlon, takes a shot, gives it up to the, the rebound went right to the Crimson's number seven, Josh Thompson, very fortuitous. He had a tough angle, but he had space and he tried to thread the needle and was unable to make it on the mark. But nevertheless, the Crimson retained possession as we approach eight minutes remaining in the third quarter. Now with it, Tyler Steinkoff takes the shot, or was that a pass? It could have been either as he tried to get it to number seven, Josh Thompson, and he did catch up with it just in time to retain possession. Clock now winding again, under eight minutes to go, third quarter. Spin move by Thompson, gives it up. Now to the near side, Ricky Peterson, and he gets it poke checked out of his basket by number 22, that was Jack Bourget. Now ball loose again. And almost an over and back, but just in time was number 33, Tanner Brendan, and that drew a whistle, and I think it's gonna be a timeout just in time. Probably by the Crimson as their offense was starting to fall apart there. And that's our first time out of the second half. And that comes with seven minutes and 35 seconds remaining. And it'll give us a chance again to look at the brackets. And there we are, Benilde, the number one seed, had a much easier time getting to the championship round of this section 5A. As I was mentioning earlier, they have racked up the goals of late. They are 14-0 this year coming into the match, or 15-0, I should say. And the Crimson were 14-1. Their only loss came back in April. So you have two winning traditions here, two proud boys lacrosse teams duking it out to get to the state tournament. Crimson, a huge suburb in the northwest of the metro area of Minneapolis. And then Benilde St. Margaret's just about a five minute drive out the freeway from downtown Minneapolis. They've been a power in boys lacrosse since I've been broadcasting, which is since what, 2016? It's already been seven years, six years, something like that. And they have been a perennial leader in lacrosse. I remember we used to come and do the state tournaments at Chan has in high school and they would take the runner up spot there for a few years. The last two years, they've broken through and won the state tournament. If I recall, Prior Lake's been a big nemesis for them over the years. I don't think they're quite as strong this year. But right now, their only opponent that they're concerned about are the Golden Domers there with the Crimson. And they have the ball clock now underway, 7.33 to go. Crimson with possession. And that is number one for the Crimson and his shot. And that's going to bring a flag as taking a shot was number one Ricky Peterson and it looked like he just tripped on his own but they may call the infraction against number 22 for the Red Knights that being Jack Bourget and Bourget is going to come off and take a knee so another power play for the Crimson they're down three and a golden opportunity for them here to cut the deficit to two and it's been a while since they've been that close in the scoring. So a key moment in this match perhaps here, midway through the third quarter. Number 33, Brendan with it. We'll keep an eye on Bourget on his knee in the, in the penalty box. Now with it, up top to number 20, Ricky Peterson. He is still, he's the leading scorer. Now at the top of the key, Tyler Steinkoff and a quick shot and a goal. Number 45 took the nifty short range pass. Landon Baki gets the goal and I have to tell you this pass, those short passes have gotta be really difficult with those lacrosse sticks. And the bounce shots have been handcuffing Axel Esco all night long. It feels like he's had a difficult time tracking it. And those hops have really caused him problems. And now the Crimson have pulled within two with 6.55 to go. They've scored two consecutive goals here with 7-4 at the beginning of the third quarter. And now they've got the scoring lead. They've scored two to Benilde's one. And now the Red Knights need to stop the bleeding. And they might right here with Maxwell Miller. Can't quite get it to go. And 
And the ball loose, still loose. And on the fly, picking it up, number 27 for the Crimson is Jackson Bennett. And he takes a shot. And now with it is number 50, Briggs Leeser. Leeser runs away from the defense and retains possession. And now he'll kick it back up top. And that brings a round of applause from the visiting fans for Maple Grove. And we got a whistle and we got a player hurt right there at the 35. I didn't see him go down. Is that Kyle Stevens zero? I can't quite tell for sure, but I think it might be. And he's right there at the 35. Yeah, that is Kyle Stevens. Let's see here. He goes down, no, there, or is that number eight? Nope, it's Kyle Stevens. He is gonna walk off under his own power. I expect we'll see him back once he shakes that off, and hopefully, and here is the play right there. Maybe that's where the injury happened, I'm not sure. So Kyle Stevens, I was singing his praises as he is a big catalyst playing both ends of the field, and now the Crimson have it with 6.15 to go. Both teams at full strength, and the Crimson on a two-goal surge here in the third quarter, trying to cut the deficit to one. Now behind the net. Number seven, Josh Thompson. Now up top to number one, Tyler Steinkoff. Gives it up over the shoulder, quick shot deflected by number eight as he comes up hobbling for the Red Knights. Number eight meaning William Fratelloni. Nice defense by Fratelloni, but the Crimson will retain possession and they have possessed the ball for the majority here of the third quarter. That's gonna bode well if you're a Crimson fan for sure. And now the ball loose, the shot taken and it's taken back by Ricky Peterson, number 20 for the Crimson. And now he loses it out of bounds, and that's gonna be an unforced air and a turnover, and the Red Knights have it, and it's been several minutes since they've had it on offense. Now Carson Brandt jousts for it against number 14 for the Crimson, and the Crimson take it right back. And they have definitely got old momentum on their side, even though they're down two goals. And now up top, that's number 33, the shot, and Esco makes the save, he kicks it out up front. What a save by Axel Esco, and it couldn't have come at a better time. And now number 13 with it, Raffi Johnson Nixon, and there's a whistle and a timeout on the field by the Red Knights, and that comes with 5.11 to go. Let's look at the replay. There is the great save by Esco, coming up big, gave up the rebound directly out in front, and then the timeout by the Red Knights with 5.11 to go, third quarter. What a match we have here. Red Knights clinging to a two goal lead midway through, more than midway through the third quarter. And we've got a great crowd here on hand. Plenty of cars in the parking lot. It stretches all the way from the field to the school. There's even an RV, I don't know. There might have been some uh, people camping out overnight trying to get the best seat in the house. I'm kidding there, of course, but there is a camper out there with the Minnesota Loons lacrosse. I don't know what they are, but they're here. So there's a lot of lacrosse fans here and there's a lot of enthusiasm in the crowd. And I have never felt a better atmosphere at a boys lacrosse game in my experience doing this announcing. Glad you're with us here on Park TV 16 Sports. Okay, the timeout is over. And I believe the Red Knights had possession in their own zone at the time of the timeout. And now coming out to pick up the ball is Gus Bell, their leading scorer. Only one goal so far here in the second half for the Red Knights. And they have not possessed it for very long. Let's see if they can turn that around here midway through the third. Now Gus Bell into the offensive zone on the left wing. Kicks it up top to number two, Robbie Hoyt. Hoyt with it as he waits for who's coming in off the sideline. That's number four, Brad Little. And they'll slow it down. And not a bad idea here, just calm things down here. They still have a two goal lead if you're a Red Knight fan. And now they gotta play Red Knight offense, don't they? Here comes number four, Little. To the near side, Gus Bell. Robbie Hoyt, Gus Bell takes it back. He'll try the left wing, gets pushed back. Now to Carson Brandt, Hoyt, 
Fakes it, now to the far corner. Dylan Popane, up top to Brandt. Thinks about shooting, holds up, now Little. Robbie Hoyt now. Red Knights exercising good patience here. They've got a two goal lead, although I don't think prevent offense works at all in lacrosse. Teams can score so fast and so quickly. But I think it's good that they collect their collective breath here. Now Carson Brandt, number one. Looking, looking down low. And it's intercepted by number 16 for the Crimson. A turnover against the Red Knights could prove costly. And in the far corner, the Crimson retain possession. Fornoy puts it out there. And now it's intercepted by number four for the Red Knights. That is Brad Little. Now number 22, Bourget. Nifty pass to Kyle Stevens. He was hurt before. I told you he'd be back, and he's back. He looks just fine. He just needed to walk it off, I felt. It might hurt tomorrow, but right now, in this temperature, he's ready to go with the finals on the line. The winners advance. The losers pack it up until next year. So everything on the line here. 3.03 to go, third quarter. Section 5A finals. And up top, number two is Robbie Hoyt. Now to the near side. Dylan Popane, quickly around the horn. The shot by Bell, the goal! His second of the afternoon, and he couldn't have come at a better time. And that brings the fans out of their seats here for the home crowd fans, the Red Knights. And now back to a three goal lead. And there was Gus Bell with a player in his face. And look at the lightning shot as he beats Fornoik in the upper left hand corner of the net. And the Red Knights finally answer back. They've got a three goal lead, 2.48 remaining in the third quarter. And we go back to the center circle. Number nine, J Shea House for the Crimson against Riley Maxwell. And now number two, here comes Robbie Hoyt. And another goal! That's what I'm talking about, how fast they can score in lacrosse. And now it's 10-6. They're back to a four goal lead. And that comes with 2.34 to go. What excitement here in this class 5A final. 78 degrees, low humidity, nice breeze out there. And we go back to the center circle and number seven, Maxwell Miller will take on number nine. That is Shea House, the junior. And it is like a wrestling match when they get down on their knees, and now Kyle Stevens gets it with the long stick. Another little catalytic move there by zero for the Red Knights. Gives them possession, and that's such an important aspect of lacrosse I've come to learn. Winning those face-offs can really be the difference of winning and losing a match, because when you have possession of the ball, you own the game at that moment. And now Dylan Popain on the near side. Up top to number five, that is Luke Drews. The far side, Gus Bell, he's got two goals on the afternoon. Now behind the net to Carson Brandt. Brandt now to the near side on the wing. Dylan Popain looks to shoot, gives it up up top to number five, Luke Drews. Now Bell finds Dylan Popain behind the net. Carson Brandt, cross court to the far side. Bell, great ball rotation. Wow, what a nice grab by Dylan. And he takes a shot and that goes all the way off the field and hits the fence without hitting the ground. I think he was a little bit in a hurry on that shot as he got that, thought he saw an opening, but I thought it was good defense by the Crimson's number 16, Shane Rass got his stick down there and it may have altered that shot. And now behind the net, Carson Brandt. Brandt now gets turned back around and right in front, found Dylan Parker, but what a, oh, it is a goal. Dylan Parker from Carson Brandt. It was difficult to see from my vantage point how or with that ball got in, and let's see if the replay can enlighten us. Carson Brandt double teamed, finds Dylan Parker, and he does get it in, and it just was hard to see as he beats Fornoik between the legs. And what a great instinct there by Carson Brandt. My only experience is playing basketball and he got double teamed. And what I remember when you get double teamed, 
someone's open. And that's what I think Carson Brandt recognized. And, and there was someone open, and it was Dylan Parker right on the doorstep, and he put it in the net. And now a five-goal lead for the Red Knights with 1.14 remaining in quarter number three. But here come the Crimson, and they score right back. Single-handed, unassisted, number 46, Jackson Kuznick. And I think the Red Knights might have been a little bit asleep there as they let him get by as he brought it all the way as he beat the defender and got it by Axel Esco. And I think that's an unassisted goal. And I'm going to equate things with basketball, but he was like he was bringing the ball up the court. And one thing I remember, you got to stop the ball, at least make him pass it. And there is a shot from behind, and that draws a whistle. That's going to be a penalty against number 18 for the Red Knights, Benjamin Watts. It's not a kneel down penalty, but it is a turnover on that foul. Now with it. Number 33 for the Crimson, and that's gonna draw a flag, and that is gonna be a penalty. And much like a power play, once the Red Knights get possession, and that's gonna be interference for one minute if I'm reading the referee's hand signals. And that's gonna come against Bourget, as we saw the replay right there. So number 22, Bourget will take a knee. I think it's a one minute power play, if I read that correctly. 50.2 seconds remaining in the third quarter. 11-7 our score. Don't go anywhere, this match is far from over. Now the Crimson, Ricky Peterson. Up top to Tanner Brendan. Crimson trying to get a goal here before the end of the third quarter to get some more momentum to go into the fourth. Winner goes to the state tournament, loser packs it up and goes home for the summer. Now Crimson on the doorstep, up top to Brendan, can't quite handle it. Defense moves in to take advantage. Ball still loose. Ball still loose. And coming away with it is Brendan. 17 seconds remaining and a shot, but there was a flag right before the shot. The shot was taken by Rory Scanlon. And is the goal gonna count? I believe it's going to. Yes, it is. Took the pass from Brendan. And just as the flag flew, he beats Axel Esco right at the waist level and he hits the back of the net. And our score now, 11-8, and the Crimson are inching back into this down by three. That goal comes with 14.6 seconds and that flag is gonna come against number 24, I believe that is. No, let's see, who is that on the far side? I think it's Judah Johnson Nixon, it is. So Judah Johnson Nixon on the knee and a power play and now the ensuing face off. And they're gonna give the ball back to the Crimson with 13.3 seconds. And if you know lacrosse, that can be an eternity. Plenty of time to score. But good defense by Kyle Stevens. Six seconds remaining, Jay Nixon and great chaos causing defense will prevent the Crimson from getting anywhere near a shot on goal. And there is the whistle signaling the end of the third quarter. Our score after three complete, 11-8 Red Knights. You're watching Park TV 16 Sports on location. Come on back for the deciding fourth quarter. Drownings are the number one cause of accidental death for young children. Simple safety steps are the best way to prevent these tragedies. Make sure kids learn how to swim. Designate an adult water watcher to watch kids in and around water. Save the phone calls and texts for when the kids are out of the water. Properly fence all pools with fences at least four feet high and with self-closing, self-latching gates. When above ground pools aren't in use, remove the ladders. When pools aren't in use, cover them. Teach kids to stay away from drains. And if a child is missing, check the pool or spa first. Consider the steps you take, then add a few more. Because you never know which pool safety step will save a life. Until it does, simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit coolsafely.gov. 
Park TV 16 Sports on location. You are watching 5A Final Boys Lacrosse. Benilde St. Margaret's at home, the number one seed, taking on the Maple Grove Crimson. And if you are just joining us, buckle up. This is going to be a heck of a fourth quarter. The Crimson have come back to cut the deficit to three, and now they have the initial faceoff in the fourth quarter. So things are setting up well for the Crimson. They come in with a 14-1 record against the undefeated Red Knights. And when I say undefeated Red Knights, I'm talking about the last two years they haven't lost since the pandemic. Now the shot, XL Esco comes up with a huge save early in the fourth quarter. Now he'll look to get rid of it. And the Red Knights cannot play prevent here. Bourget loses it. Nice four check by the Crimson and they come away with it nicely there, picking it up on the fly, number 20 for Maple Grove, Ricky Peterson. You know, those are the unsung things that I can tell from watching lacrosse that are so critical to winning lacrosse games, is picking balls up that are loose like that, on the fly, in traffic, taking hits from left and right. And the Crimson were able to do it in that time, and now we're under 11 minutes to go. This is it for both teams. 11 minutes to the state tournament right here. You're watching Park TV 16 Sports. I'm Robert Christensen, so glad you're with us. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. This is great high school excitement sports on display. Here comes number 24 for the Crimson, Aleka Domingo. Now to the near side, number 28, Rory Scanlon. To the corner, number 45, Landon Baki. And they lose it momentarily. Peterson trying to prevent the unforced air and he does take it to himself. And now he rolls it to number 24. What a save, 24 oh Domingo. Wow, and now a flag is gonna come against the Red Knights. There's gonna be a power play for the Crimson and they're with it now and it won't start until a Red Knight touches it or there is a goal. Now on the near side is Ricky Peterson. Now, unlike hockey, they don't pull the goaltender. Now it goes down the Crimson. Crimson still has it. That was number seven, Josh Thompson. And now picking it up, Axel Esco behind the net. That draws the whistle and stops the clock with 9.47 to go. And there's going to be another power play for the Crimson coming up with 9.27 remaining and over to take a knee. On the far sideline, is that Bourget? I can't quite tell the number. I think it is. That sun is beating down on the field. So a power play for the Crimson. They're down three with 9.43 to go in the season for one of these teams. Now number one with it, Tyler Steinkoff to the far wing. Ricky Peterson, the leading scorer, finds his teammate, gets pushed down. That brings a whistle and a push against number 24 is gonna be called for the infraction, Judah Johnson Nixon. Now the Crimson started out again, number 45, Landon Baki. Up top on the key to Tyler Steinkoff. Oh, it gets deflected by Kyle Stevens. What a great deflection by Stevens, and he picks it up. What a brilliant play, and he gets it stripped from behind, and it's gonna go out of bounds. And what an also great play by Josh Thompson as he strips it right back. Wow, what great defensive lacrosse action on display. We're approaching nine minutes remaining. Crimson retained possession again, and a quick shot of goal from number one to number 33. One being Tyler Steinkopf, number 33, Tyler Brendan. And now the Crimson with exactly nine minutes remaining have cut the deficit to two to 11-9. With a bang bang play from far out the outside the arc, they beat Axel Esco. And the Red Knights have faced their stiffest competition of the year right here in this final. Nothing is certain now. Nine minutes to go. Our score, 11 to nine. And the crowd can sense it. Both sides cheering. And this is the best lacrosse game I have ever, ever witnessed. Right here. All right, now back to the center circle. Maxwell Miller to do the honors for the Red Knights. They have not possessed the ball for very long in this second half. 
And now they do right now. Number 33, Brady Marcus with the long stick. Finally gets possession for the Red Knights. Now number four, Brad Little with it. Clinging to a two goal lead, 8.45 to go. Will the Red Knights respond right here? Now up top, number one, Carson Brandt. Brandt now, he'll trot, give it up top to Gus Bell, their leading scorer. I believe he has three on the afternoon. Look for him to take a leadership role. Now the quick shot and great defense by the Crimsons. Number 27, Jackson Bennett, as he interrupted the shot by Dylan Parker as he took the pass from behind from Carson Brandt. Now with it, number four, Brad Little up top to Gus Bell. He takes a shot, he hit the crossbar and it ricochets all the way out to midfield. My goodness. And a turnover is going to give the ball to the Crimson, much to the disappointment of the Red Knight fans. They are letting their voices known and hit the upper left post there. And they can't believe that the Crimson got possession. 8.09 remaining fourth quarter. Play underway, clock winding. Pass inside to number 31. That is Connor Cashbaum. And now coming away with it is the Red Knights Gus Bell. As they get the turnover on their own accord, we're under eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Red Knights up by two. And now they have it on top, Robbie Hoyt, and they'll slow it down. Big deep breath now as we sprint to the final moment here of this final match in Section 5A, boys lacrosse. Now Gus Bell. What a crowd we have hand hand here. On top, number two with it, Robbie Hoyt. And now a quietness has come over the crowd. I think everybody gets what's on the line here. The defending state champion gets a poke checked away nicely by number 46, Jackson Kuznick. And now the Crimson got it back and they need to get it back. They're down two. Now an outlet pass overshoots number 31. That would have been a heck of a reception had he come up with it. It was intended for 31, Connor Cashbaum. The goaltender, Hale Fornoik, overshot him and now we have a timeout on the field in the fourth quarter. That timeout comes with 6.59 to go. Seven minutes to go to the state tournament. One of these teams is gonna advance. The other one is gonna be going home. The only thing left is graduation probably for both these high schools coming up later in the week. And a timeout on the field. 11-9 our score. And I just wanna look back here at the Red Knights. Have they been in this tight of a game all year long? The only one, let's see, they won uh, 16 to 10 against Edina. That was a six goal differential. St. Thomas Academy gave them trouble, nine to six. Chan Hazen, 13 to eight. So they've had their share of close games, but the last three games, they have scored 25 to zero, 24 to one, 18 to one. But right here with 6.59 to go, our score is 11 to nine. This is as tight of a game they've been in all year. And it is the final. And now we're coming out of the timeout. Both teams at full strength, Crimson with the ball. They'll start out on that far sideline. Number 33 with it for the Crimson. Now number one, Tyler Steinkoff, he takes a shot, deflected in front, ball loose, picked up by the Crimson. But what a fortuitous bounce that was for Maple Grove. Now up top, number 28 with it, Rory Scanlan, Scanlan, he has 48 goals on the year. Now to the corner by the goal line extended to the near side to number seven, Josh Thompson. Thompson with it. Dukes in, looks, looking, looking for a lane. Now gets hit from behind by Raffy Johnson Nixon. He forces the ball loose, but coming back up with it. And a quick shot and a deflection by number 15, Riley Murphy. What great defense by Murphy for the Red Knights. Clock stopped with 6.09 to go. Ball out of bounds. Crimson retained possession. And the crowd not happy with some of the calls here. Now number 28, 
Rory Scanlon comes right in and scores it. Are you kidding me? Rory Scanlon brings the Crimson within one goal with 5.59 to go in the fourth quarter. Let's see as he beats the defender, number 11, William Connor, and then came right in and just got it right by, right at eye length, up high. It went right by his head, Axel Esco, and that is the 10th goal, and the Crimson have come roaring back here in the second half. They've cut the deficit to one. It's a brand new ball game right now from the McQuinn Athletic Complex on the campus of Benilde St. Margaret's. Six minutes to the checkered flag, as they say, if you're a sports car racing fan. And now the faceoff is going to award possession to the Red Knights. And now some of the fans calling for delay of game, but they are not going to be appeased of that by the refs. Now here comes Robbie Hoyt. I thought he was going to take a shot right off the bat. Now Hunter Payer behind the net. To the near side, number two, Robbie Hoyt. Up top to Gus Bell, to the far side, that's Luke Drews. Red Knights cling to a one goal lead, 11 to 10. Five and a half minutes to go to the state tournament. Now Dylan Parker, Carson Brandt. I don't think the Red Knights have faced this kind of white knuckle game in quite a while. Let's see how they handle it. Now on the far side, Carson Brandt with a quick shot, goes wide. Out of bounds, and the Red Knights will retain possession. 5.17 remaining. There's the shot by Brandt. Went wide left, off the mark. Now Dylan Parker to the near side. Gus Bell. Bell with it. He'll pull up right about the 25, which is really 15 yards from the goal line. Now behind the net to Dylan Parker. Parker now. Up to the far side, Carson Brandt. Brandt now will try to drive the lane. Looks, gets turned back around. Good defense by the Crimson. Shot deflected. It almost got, got by Fornoik, but he was able to get just enough of it. And now the interception by Hunter Payer. And now he gets mugged, and the ball comes loose. And now an outlet pass misses the mark and ends up in the basket of number 15. That is Lucas Bakke. Wow, what a turn of events right there. And now it's taken right back by number 15, Riley Murphy, and he loses it. Defense on display. And now picked up by Dylan Parker on the far side. Parker now getting harassed by number 14 out of the Crimson, Joey Heisler. And now Kyle Stevens comes out with the long stick to slow it down. And I look at the clock and we're already approaching four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. 4.14 remaining, clock winding down. Red Knights clinging to a one goal lead in the fourth quarter. Trying to defend their state championship right here in this section 5A final. Now behind the net, Hunter Pear, Carson Brandt, up top to Gus Bell, under four to go. Bell now gets turned back around. Boy, the Crimson have played the best defense against the Red Knights I've seen all year. Now on the far side, Robbie Hoyt, Gus Bell now will drive the lane, looking to get a shot, gets double teamed, turns back around, finds Hunter Payer behind the net. Payer now to the left wing, the shot by Robbie Hoyt, deflected, comes right back to him with three and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Robbie Hoyt with it. Now to the near side, Gus Bell, Bell. Red Knights having a hard time penetrating this defense in the second half. They had seven goals, they've only scored four in the second half. Now, right on the doorstep, Payer shoots and scores! What a great look by Gus Bell. Hunter Payer slipped in, caught that pass, and put it in the back of the net for a key two-goal lead. Hunter Payer was left wide open right on the doorstep, and there was nothing Fornoy could do, and Hunter Payer knew exactly what to do with it. What a key goal for the Red Knights. That's gonna relieve a little bit of the pressure. But they still got their work cut out. A two goal lead is nothing in lacrosse. 3.13 to go. We brought you the girls final. They scored two goals in 33 seconds at the end of the first half in their semifinal match on Monday. And that can happen for either team here. But that's gotta be a bit of a breath of fresh air for the Red Knights. A two goal lead feels a lot better than a one goal lead. Now, three minutes remaining and Kyle Stevens comes up. Look out from behind. And that is number two, Robbie Hoyt. Three minutes to go exactly. Three minutes to the state tournament and a ticket to Stillwater, Minnesota. For the Red Knights or the Crimson, who's it gonna be? Now the Red Knights at the top of the key, Robbie Hoyt. 
Now to number 12, Adam Beckman. Behind the net, Carson Brandt. Gus Bell takes a shot at a goal. And the sharpshooter, Gus Bell, gets his fourth of the night, and it couldn't have come at a more key time for these Red Knights. They go up to a three goal lead, 13 to 10. That goal comes with 2.40 to go, and what are you gonna do? Hale Fornoit, the goaltender for Maple Grove. Gus Bell has one of the sharpest shots I've seen in boys lacrosse, and he put it on display right there. Three goal lead, still not insurmountable for the Crimson, but they need to get this face off if they're gonna get back in it. Now Maxwell Miller looking for it, ball still loose. And the Crimson come up with it, he goes down and they're gonna award him because of a trip, I believe. And now pushing back and forth. And now with it, number 33, Tanner Brendan for the Crimson. They've gotta go to work quickly here if they're gonna get back in it. Landon Baki now, up top to number one, Tyler Steinkoff. To the near side, Rory Scanlon. Scanlon now comes back and they gotta get going here if they're gonna get in it. They've got a three goal deficit, 13 to 10. Scanlon with it. Second leading score, protects the ball, quick shot, deflected in front. Ball loose behind the net, picked up by the Crimson's number seven, Josh Thompson. Thompson, I thought he had a moment of a chance to shoot there, but great defense who closed the gap by number 11, William Connor for the Red Knights. Now driving, getting double teamed, getting through both of them, and a shot. Wow, what great strength on display by the Crimson's number 28. My goodness, Rory Scanlon, what a tough kid he is. And he is beat up down there. One and a half minutes to go. Will the Red Knights hold on for another state tournament berth? Now a miscue there, Styler Tynkoff, and that's gonna waste precious seconds now. 120 remaining. Red Knights up by three. Now rushing behind the net, and a quick shot, and a save by Axel Esco with 110 to go, and the Red Knights have possession. Esco with it. Major four check, and now catching it at midfield in his own zone is number five, Luke Drews. Drews now. Rushes it in the offensive zone, and now it's in the basket of Gus Bell on that far sideline. 51 seconds remaining. Red Knights with it in a three goal lead. And they will try to punch that ball out of the basket. The goaltender comes out to assist. I've never seen that before, and now there's a whistle, and that stops the clock with 38.5 seconds. Nobody's celebrating Hurley here on the Red Knights. They have been pushed to the limit here by these Crimson, and now a shot along the sideline. And that's gonna be a turnover, and the Red Knights have it with the ball with a half minute to go. In the slot, the Red Knights with it. That is Hunter Pear. Hunter Pear gets it poke checked away, no whistle, he loses his stick, picked up by number 16, Shane Rask. And now, quickly into the offensive zone, here come the Crimson, and now Axel Esco, he'll just wail it down all the way into the Crimson zone. Six seconds remaining, four seconds, two seconds, and that's gonna do it. The Red Knights hold on to win the 5A final. And they advance to the state championship in Stillwater. So for Paul Broden, our producer, and everyone connected with our, oh, we're gonna have awards. We're not gonna close it down. Stay with us for the trophy presentation. But I'll just say this, what an exciting match in boys lacrosse. Something that I have never witnessed like this before. And the Red Knights were tested to the very end. And that's gonna serve them well in the state tournament, I believe. They were having their way with the teams they had to play to get to this point, having outscored them. I'm exaggerating here, 100 to nothing, basically. I think it was 75 to two something close to that, but they got pushed here by the Crimson and all kinds of respect for the Maple Grove Crimson. They were down by a significant margin at the end of the first half and they came back and played their hearts out. So my hat's off to the Maple Grove Crimson. Really, really well played game. They had a great strategy and they almost pulled off the upset. And I think they taught these Red Knights a good lesson here 
And they have toughened them, toughened them up for the state tournament to be sure. As they exchange, congratulations at the middle of the field. Showing respect and sportsmanship, always important. And we've got the medals and the trophies at the 50 yard line on the near sideline. And we will bring you the trophy presentation in just a few moments. You're watching Park TV 16 Sports on location. And again, glad you're with us. What a match it was. So I don't know what the seedings are gonna be in the state tournament. Usually they decide those over the weekend. And the tournament will start middle of next week in Stillwater and White Bear Lake. They're the hosts again this year. And we'll see how the girls do. Benil, they're playing Maple Grove at their site this afternoon. And we could have two Red Knight teams in the lacrosse state tournament this year. That remains to be seen. And kind of a reversal of seeds where the girls, Benil, were the number two seed in their bracket in this bracket of course the boys with the number one seed and here they come over and I'll sure they'll all admit to a player that this was their toughest match in quite a while but what a satisfying win for the Red Knights and what a frustrating loss I think for the Crimson they just got down a little too far they made a valiant second half comeback and they should be very, very proud of their play here. They had an excellent strategy to knock out the two-time defending state champions, and they came up just a little bit short. And I expect next year, when we're back here, we're gonna see these Crimson again in the section finals against these Red Knights. Congratulations to both teams. And both now, I don't know, Paul, can they hear the PA announcer on the broadcast? Not really, okay, so I will try to fill in where I can. And now they're going to award the medals of the runner-ups to Maple Grove. And I will do the Maple best I can to bring you the names time. of each of the players accepting the medals for each team. And that's number one, Tyler Steinkoff. Number three, Charlie Kubelbeck. Number three, Charlie Kubelbeck. Number four, Brady Maline. Number four, Brady Maline. Number five. Ethan number Barry. five, that's Ethan Barry. Number seven, Josh. Number Thompson. seven, Josh Thompson. Number eight, number eight, Thor Sukup. Number nine, number Shea nine, House. Shea House. Number eleven, number eleven, Jack, Jack Ampey. Ampey. Number twelve, number 12 Beck, Beck Journey. Journey. Number 14, Number 14, Joey Heisier, Heisier maybe. Number 15, Lucas 15, Bakke. Lucas Bakke. Number 16, Shane Rask. Number 16, Shane Rask. Number 17, Jackson Schultzenberg. Number 17, Jackson Schultzenberg. Number 20, Ricky Peterson. Number 20, Ricky Peterson. Number 24, Akila Domingo. Number 24, Akila Domingo. Number what a great 26, name. Emerson Knutson. 26, Emerson Knutson. Number 27, Jackson. 27, Bennett. Jackson Bennett. He played stellar on defense for the Crimson. Number 28, the Rory big guy Scanlon. there. Number 28, Rory Scanlon played his heart out. 31, Second leading Jackson. scorer. Number, Number 31, Connor Cashbaum. Number 35, Caden Hamas. Number 33, Tanner Brendan, also outstanding play today. Number 35, Caden Komicki. Number 44, the goaltender, Number Hale Fornoik. He played his heart out as well. And I'm sure there's tears and sadness on that crimson, but they should be proud of what they've done here. That's Landon Baki. Number 46, Jackson Kuznick. And then number 50 is Briggs Leeser. And those are the Maple Grove Crimson. They have nothing to hang their heads the about. Grove, they played so well. Just came up a little bit short, but they are your runner-ups in 5A section lacrosse. And now the Red Knights to accept the championship trophy of section 5A. And congratulations to the section five boys lacrosse champions, the Benil St. Margaret Red Knights. And here are the Red Knights, number zero. Kyle Stevens. Number zero, Kyle Stevens. Big time player, number, number zero. Carson Brandt, number one. 
Stellar two, play by Ryan him as well. Robbie Hoyt, number two. Accepting his medals. Number four, Brad Little. Number four, Brad Little. Seniors, all these guys are number seniors. Five, Luke Drews. Number five, Luke Drews, also a senior. Very senior heavy number team. Six, Gus, Gus Bell. Bell, the junior, he'll be back next year. Leading scorer, number seven, Maxwell, Maxwell Miller. Miller, he's a senior. They're gonna miss him. He won so many face-offs, which is critical eight, to winning William lacrosse Fredoloni. games, I've come to learn. William Fratelloni, also a senior. 10, Cannon, Mills. Cannon Mills, another senior. Number 11, now William, William, William Connor, a junior. Number Great 12, defender, William then Adam Beckman. I ran into him in the restroom. I asked him how it was going out there, and he goes, it's hot, man. Number 13, now number 13, Johnson, Raffi Nixon. Johnson, Nixon, sophomore. He'll be back. Number, number 14, 14, Joshua Imms, just a freshman. He's got three more seasons ahead of him here at the Red Knights. Number 15, Riley, Riley Murphy. Murphy, number 11, a junior. He'll be back. Number 16, 16 Dylan, Dylan Popain. Had a couple of tallies tonight, this number afternoon. 18, He's a sophomore. He'll be back. Number 18, Benjamin Watts, a junior. Hunter Payer. And Hunter Payer got a key, key goal late number to give them a two-goal lead that kind of began the ending of it for the Crimson. Number 22, number Jack Bourget. Jack Anderson. Number 23, Jack Anderson. Number sophomore, Judah, Judah Johnson, Nixon, a sophomore. All these guys are number underclassmen. Number They'll be back. Holton number 26, Holton Vanderlinde, freshman. Number 27, Axel, Axel Esco, the goaltender, he'll be back. Number 33, Big kid, 6'8", 230. Now, number 33, Brady Marcus had some key plays and today. Dylan and then Parker. Dylan Parker was his stellar self, manning the zone behind the goal line. Now the and now the, the captains Parker will accept the 5A championship trophy. Championship They're going to Stillwater. It's not exactly like America's Most Talented or whatever that show is. You're going to Hollywood, but guess what, guys? They're going to Stillwater. They punched their ticket. They're going to the state tournament. Go on down and support them next week in the beautiful town of Stillwater. And our final here, the Section 5A final boys lacrosse champions, Benilde St. Margaret's, they win 13 to 10. They remain undefeated in the last two years. So for Paul Broden, our producer, and everyone connected with Park TV 16 Sports, there's a picture behind the graphics suitable for framing your champions, Benilde St. Margaret's. My name is Robert Christensen. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again.